In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at, in my opinion, what is the best one-handed backhand on the tour in 2024, and that's Grigor Dimitrov. Lots of people for many years have called him Baby Fed, but you know what? We got to stop calling him Baby Fed. He's a grown-ass man, and he has amazing technique. He's worked very, very hard to get it. We're going to break it down from the grips, the preparation, uh, little cues and tips I want you to think about when you go out and practice. And we're not going to only show you how Grigor does it, but we're going to show you how you can do it too. It actually takes training and not talent to create perfect technique on a one-handed backhand, a two-handed backhand, a forehand, a serve. Of course, Grigor might have some more natural ability than we do, but anybody can create perfect technique if they want to. I'm actually going to prove it to you if you've watched today's entire video. Let's get into this. Okay, so the first thing we're going to take a look at today is Grigor's grip. So when he makes that turn, we're going to focus Get a close-up in on his knuckles there. And we can see that he has his knuckles right on top of the racket. I like to call this the motorcycle grip. So right on top of your grip, place those knuckles. That's going to enable you to rip that ball. Like some old-school backhands like McEnroe, their knuckles might be a little more in the center of the grip. Let me see if I can draw it here. You know, they just hold it. They'd have their knuckles lower on the grip. That makes it harder to really accelerate and rip the ball. Almost all pros today are going to be holding the grip in a very similar fashion here. So he's got his knuckles on top of the racket. Okay, so there's there is your your grip that you want to think about. You don't even really need to think about bevels or anything like that. Just pretend that your grip is a motorcycle handles, and you're going to hold your knuckles on top. All right, now, the next thing we're going to take a look at, which is a very similar setup to uh, Roger Fetter, is how he kind of has his elbows in a ready position out to the side, pointing out each way, okay? So this enables, especially for a one-hander, to get ready really quickly. We can also see that in a ready position, he is holding his non-dominant hand by the throat there towards the top. So all he's got to do right here, what we're going to notice is he's kind of already ready to hit the ball, believe it or not. If we take a look at how he's looking this way at the court, when he gets ready to turn here in this first move, we're not going to see too much of a difference. We're not going to see his arms really working to get in a position and bring the racket back. He's just going to pivot his foot here. He's just basically going to pivot that foot backwards and just basically turn. See, watch this. Not much hand or arm work going on here right now. See? He's just basically bringing that pivot foot back, and now he's set. Another thing that we're going to see when he hits that one-hander is look at how the racket butt, the bottom of the racket, is literally facing right to the ground. And the tip of the racket is going way up to the sky. Now, I don't know if I recommend this for all recreational tennis players. You're going to have to get some great timing and racket work to be able to do this uh, pretty well. Like, this is going to take some work because that racket eventually has got to be able to drop under the ball. So that racket has got to be able to come from here, down to here, and through and back up. Okay, so the higher you bring the racket, just remember that, even though it looks cool, it's going to take you more timing, a little more skill, I guess you would say, to be able to pull this off. But you can do it, as I'll show you uh, at the end of this video. So we can see that. There is game set he uh, notice he pushes that elbow back pretty high. We'll take a look at another view a little later in this video when we're looking at this. Uh, so there he is. He's set and ready to go. He's planted off this back foot. Most of his weight is still, because we can see some space. See how we see some space there on his front foot? So he still has loaded most of his weight 
on the back foot and the hip. Remember this, when you want to hit a ball hard, this hip right here is going to create the whip up here, okay? The hip creates the whip, they're connected. And the hip kind of makes a decision like, let's go, let's do this, let's start committing to the ball, and then that's gonna have the racket head give it signal to really start firing. What you start to do. You see how you see how the hips making that motion down, and that's also bringing his racket down. And then there's the contact point. He's a little probably in closer than he likes. This is probably not the ideal ball for Grigor. He's he's a little tight on this one. Okay, but another thing that I want you to notice, and we'll take a look at another one. But to hit a one-handed backhand well you've really got to be so, so far out in front. Now, this is this is not an ideal um, stroke for Grigor. I bet you if he could get a redo, he'd probably take one. He'd be like, that's not as clean as I can hit it. But he still knows how important it is. Look how far out in front. That's that's pretty far out in front he is to hit that backhand. Where of a two-hander, you can you can get away with hitting the ball kind of like even with your feet, even behind a little bit. Use that that top wrist to maneuver the ball. But on a one-hander, I do think it takes better timing uh, to be able to pull it off. And then he comes, kind of fights this one off. So we'll take a look at another stroke from Grigor here. Okay, so the next thing is, if you have a one-hander and you've ever taken some private lessons and the coach is kind of looking at you from this angle, they're feeding balls out of their basket, probably at some point a coach is going to tell you, hey, on your one-hander, I want you to turn to where I can see your back. And since you can't see your own body, uh, I want to show you exactly what a coach would love to see. So maybe you practice this. Uh, so when a coach is saying, hey, I want to see your back, like literally this is what we would love to see. Uh, obviously, Grigor would be our star student because uh, look at look at this. Look how much of his back we see. We don't even see any of his chest. Again, we can see the racket tip up there still up to the sky. So just remember this visual. Uh, now, we know that, that he has turned. He's turned side on. With, when they say side on, basically they mean, they mean uh, this where uh, – hold on. Let me get my drawing utensils here. He's side on right there, his whole body is. But what's important is that he still has not committed all his weight onto that front foot. So even at this point, even though it looks like it, he's still light on his front foot. Most of the weight is still back here. And then, so he's still relaxed in the front leg to where he can start to have the hip, create the whip, and then transfer more onto the front leg. You see how he just did that? And then he's hitting the ball. Let's clear this out. Again, take a look at that nice contact point way out in front. And remember how we talked about the motorcycle grip? Another thing I like to tell my students is pretend that you're making a fist, like you're almost fist bumping the tennis ball. Okay, so this is what I mean. Like you're going to make a fist to the tennis ball. And that way you can make sure that your racket frame is not opening up to where the ball would tweak and fly out on you and you lose all your spin. All right, let's uh, take a look at the back view of Grieger's backhand. I just want to show you this follow through, which we're going to get into a little more. Watch the follow through. This thing is just like amazing right there. <laughs> that is beautiful, which I'm going to touch on a little bit uh, in this next segment. Okay, so let's get into the back view here. Because uh, there's something I want you to really pay attention to as a one-hander. Now, first of all, let's again take a look at that elbow, okay? This is another uh, elbow the enemy move. We heard Jeff Saldenstein talk about the elbow the enemy on the serve. But pretend this, somebody's coming at you and you're going to give them a high elbow up to the face when you're going into the turn right here. And uh, he's really getting down low for this ball. So look how low the racket gets Look at those strings. We can see those strings angled down towards the ground. This is this is very important. So when he goes to hit that ball, that the ball is not going to fly out on him. So very important that his strings are facing towards the ground. Not as much as you're seeing some topspin forehands. But we can see we've got that angle towards the ground. He's going to come up. Now watch this. Watch how long 
he's going to stay side on. This is great that we have the crowd over there. Watch. So he's just hit the ball. He's side on and still side on. The ball is way gone. Okay. This is where a lot of recreational players make a big mistake. They open up too early. But we can see the ball is right here right now. Grigor's body is still facing way over towards the crowd. And then the range of motion is just phenomenal. I mean, that is crazy. I like to call this, when I'm watching Grigor, uh, and I'll show you one more view of this, uh, how he does this, but I like to, I like to call this a V <laughs> that he's making. He's almost making a V with his two arms here. Um, and again, a little bit of this might be natural ability, but I'm going to show you how even this right here, the way he's able to have this crazy range of motion, reminds me of Roger Federer, um, that that just doesn't come naturally either. Okay, that That is trained as well. So a lot of these moves that just look like pure talent, they're actually trained. That range of motion right there. I want to take one more look at that finish. Oh, before we leave this spot, though, one thing I want you to notice, too, is on a one-hander, when you go to dip, this is something you can practice by yourself on the court. You want your strings to actually say hello to the fence, the back fence. Look at that. Look how those strings are facing towards the back fence. And the racket butt is, again, facing towards the crowd. This is another key checkpoint you want to make if you want to have a really nice roll on your topspin and, and add a lot of power. Just be able to really release and rip that thing. All right, so let's just take a look at this swing through the ball. So fluid, so smooth. Great out in front contact point. And then to the finish. Okay, really you can see right here what I'm talking about when I am saying that V finish. Look look at this, the way he's coming here. That is incredible. And then look at the strings basically facing towards the ground so we know that the ball is not flying out on him. But again, right there, oh, and I like to call this the Fed buff too. The Fed puff to the side, really puffing out that chest. That's like a perfect follow-through, perfect modern backhand follow-through. That's why I think Grigor uh, has the best one-handed backhand in 2024 on tour right now and playing some amazing tennis. But all this, even the follow-through with the, where you're just like, oh, I just don't have that range of motion. Not that you'll ever get that range of motion, but it just Grigor was just not born with this. He was probably born with some skills maybe you and I don't have. I'll grant you that. But this guy works his tail off to create his talent. And I'm going to show you right now how you can create your own talent code and you can develop a perfect one-handed backhand if that's what you really get excited about. So let's do this. Let's get into this. So one of my goals this year is to show regular people how they can create perfect technique if they really want to and to just explain to you more that it's just not about watching a great video analysis video and kind of going okay I understand the steps but understand that you have to create what's called your own talent code you know all these amazing athletes even though they're great athletes they probably have some natural skills that you and I were not born with but they also cultivated it, they're through their own talent code. There's three ingredients that it takes to create your own talent code, which is basically um, ignition, getting excited about something, then deep focus practice and a master coach. And I actually want to be leading people. I'm going to be opening up a new membership to where I'll be working with people virtually online to help them create their own talent code. There's going to be more coming on that later. But I want to play a little video. Uh, it's a book I've been reading called The Talent Code. And this is a little video that really explains, well, what is the talent code? And I'm going to show you some video of how Grigor, to end this video, how Grigor works at creating his talent code. The content of this video is based on The Talent Code by Dan Coyle. 
You might believe that some people are just born talented, and that's how they became successful. Well, the author of this book wants to change your mind. He set out on a journey to visit so-called talent hotbeds, small places that produce an abnormal amount of highly successful people, to learn about what created extremely talented individuals. What he discovered was that there were three elements to the talent code, the first one being deep practice. To understand what happens during deep practice, we need to learn about myelin. Every human movement, thought, or feeling is a precisely timed electric signal traveling through a specific chain of neurons in the brain. Cells called astrocytes sense the nerve firing, which stimulates another cell called oligodendrocyte to wrap myelin around the fiber. The more the nerve fires, the more myelin wraps around it and the faster the signals travel, increasing velocities up to 100 times over fibers that are not myelinated. When you practice a skill, what you are actually doing is laying down myelin, which results in you becoming better at firing those signals and executing that skill properly. Myelin equals skill. The more we develop a skill, or rather, myelinate a neural circuit, the less aware we are that we're using it. So on the surface, Grigor Dimitrov this seems extremely talented, but every move that he is making on the court it's all done behind the scenes, from his coach giving him hand feeds to him going in the gym and working on cardio to working on strength and flexibility. It's all very, very deliberate practice that Grigor does to be able to go out there and hit the ball with the timing that he has, to be able to uh, look as flexible as he does, as fast as he does, as powerful as he does. Every single movement is practiced over and over again through this deep focus practice that his personal physical trainer puts him through and then also his, uh, his tennis coach. And so uh, I just want to leave you, there's one cool tool that I've been using lately that if you want to really um, develop perfect technique. It's a great tool you can use. It basically costs you like a six pack of working with one of your uh, a coach at a local uh, club, and you can hit a thousand balls in an hour using this thing. And it will enable you to develop that myelin, that what we think of as muscle memory, to when you're doing it. Uh, make sure that you're very focused and that you're filming yourself as well. Extremely important. Uh, I'll show you me hitting a couple balls, and then if it sounds good to you, if you want one, go in the link description below and get yourself one. You'll also get a discount when you click on my link. And if you've been watching this video long enough, you're still watching, please give this video a like and subscribe.